Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is having a great start to the weekend and seeing this report with great interest. This price number report 33. And in this report, I'm going to present the on chain analysis, some triggers that have happened in the last couple of weeks and the, some technical analysis. And in the end, some fun facts just to end the show. So let me get started with the fear and greed index. I think this is something that everyone must be familiar with the darker points on this data the more something towards red or orange territory is marking the fear index and that towards the lighter green territory is marking the the darker green territory is marking the greed index so this happens in, on a scale of 0 to 100 and you would uh, see that often during a bear market consolidation, something that happened during the 2018 and 19 consolidation that you would see all these dots superimposed on each other. If you just kind of zoom into this part, you would see all these dots superimposed on each other. And it's hard to project logically what might happen next during a bear phase because it's just going up and down all over the place. So this is what we saw during the 2018-19 bear market. This is what we saw around the 2021 bear market. And this is also what we are seeing right now, right? The consolidation of these points to get clustered together. So it's logically difficult to project what the market might do next week or a couple of weeks from now. Although uh, this does show some kind of long term formation of a bear and bull phase that we see over here. The point starts declustering itself from the crowd. And that is when we kind of see the uh, a bull market. So right now it's very clear that the cluster is being formed. The market is trying to understand what might be the next move. We might get a, a downward trajectory or an upward trajectory, most likely on the upward side in the coming weeks and months. And I will go over what the data says with respect to that. And I want to talk about the active address sentiment indicator. So what this is, is this is a comparison between the 28 day price change against the 28 day active addresses that are in operation. So the, the orange line that you see is the price movement over the last 28 days and the upper bounds that you see the red dot and the green dots are the boundaries for the volatility index of the active addresses. And you would see that whenever this orange line or the price goes to the upper band, that means the market is overheated and it needs to turn down. And wherever it is in the lower brand touching the, the green zone, that means there is a up move to come because the market is oversold. So this is a very sensitive indicator. It's only measuring the short term movements. It does not say much about the long term movements, but in the short term, yes, uh, we might go a bit further down. I would ideally like to see some kind of bottom formation in the, in the markets, but we might move up anytime in the coming days or weeks. And going forward, I would like to this is the chart. I These are the lines I drew months and months back. I think the start of this year and this is played out. Uh, the technical charts have played out as it is. So you see the upper bounds and the lower bounds of this. This descending triangle and uh, right now we are in the lower bound of this line. You would see and I've also drawn the 2008 2017 all time highs, which stood about $800 billion. And right now we are sitting around $950 billion. So there is a possibility that we dip a little further down. Ideally, I would like to have a large dip down so that we can have a move up. But that seems to be a little unlikely because the markets are in an oversold territory and already entered that territory. So markets can do what they want to do. But I do expect us that this is a resistance at the moment, then it has to break. But the volatility you would see over the last couple of months have been decreasing and decreasing uh, the daily volatility. So I would see some kind of a, you know, a, a dip or a movement before a sharp move up. 
and for the sharp move to happen going forward we need to see volumes we need to see the the active addresses uh, this is like only the change in 28 days but overall the usage the the retail investors coming back into the market and that has not yet happened in terms of the xmr usd still a cup and handle formation is in play and we have been seeing this this pattern forming over the last over the last days the volatility is also reducing you would see monero was taking around 150 dollars for a very long time in fact i had placed the buy order 150 it did not trigger in, in over five days so this is what we are seeing and even though the market is going down it's also going down with it so everything is you know uh, clustered together so i'm just waiting for the moment when the volume picks up again on monero and we can see an upward movement because this part is still in place so i will not rule it out and uh, uh, going forward there was also something interesting with regards to the net realized profit and loss this is again another consequence of what is happening in in short the overall market of the overall hodlers let's say have been in net loss as soon as it goes below the 200 week moving average which stands about 28 21 22000 so once the price dips below that overall the crowd is in a net realized loss on average and that is what we see here and whenever we see this, this the sellers are basically exhausted so people calling for 10000 of bitcoin well anything can happen but i don't see that happening that easily that is what i'm the, the point i'm trying to say so about dip to 18000 17000 and the sellers are already exhausted and this is what we see here and yes so once the sellers are completely exhausted from the market probably shorts have to be uh, you know squeezed out from the system and then we can see a large up move and when that happens we cannot say but i'm sure it's coming and going forward something off crypto markets this is the overall the gdp part in the world i just want to show these numbers for the audience just for them to get an idea of of the world markets the united states and china contribute the largest share of gdp in the world and that is why if something happens to let's say uh, france or brazil or italy or india uh, it's not really going to have a major impact in the world yes domestically they're going to have an impact but if anything happens to us economy or china it's it's having a major impact to the to the world and right now the focus is on china because their economy from what i understand and also from sources i've discussed this with the economy is suffering inside and whatever geopolitically is happening might be to kind of put a tab on that in uh for nationalistic nationalistic reasons so this might be the focus because this might trigger some kind of downturn downturn in the in the in the coming time in terms of recession because China is still responsible for a large portion of the supply chain and United States produces a lot of goods and services around the globe. So this is what I wanted to indicate and also some more news is like speculators are increasing their US dollar bets. So the US dollar is strengthening and doing good that way. Yes, minus the inflation part certainly. And Brazil has recently posted one of, one of the biggest account deficits. So one by one, all the countries are, you know, falling as a domino effect. And last but not the least, uh, the euro is falling against the US dollar. And what we see here is, yeah, the US dollar strengthening against the euro. That is all from my side today and I hope you learned something new and I will see you all in the next price report. Thank you.